Hello everyone, I'm Heather. Yeah. I'm back for what I hope will be a quick video. But honestly, I have a lot to say, so it's not gonna, it's not looking good, but I'll do my best. This is my TBR video for Shorty September, okay? So the whole first week of August is just gone. It just left, I didn't even see it going. And if I'm not careful, the first of September is just gonna come around and bite me in the ass, okay? So I need to get prepared. We need to talk about my TBR. And to be honest, it's not really gonna be as simple as sticking books in a slot for a prompt or whatever. Like I have a serious situation, okay? If you know me, you know I have a project this year and we are coming into the second half of the year. So I need to get serious. The project for this year is to knock out as many unread books in my house as possible, okay? To not buy a lot, to read loads of them and knock down these unread book piles, right? So, these are all the unread books in my house under 250 pages plus five library books because i have a weakness there are 37 books here with five books from the library because i'm weak i like i'm not delusional okay like i know that i cannot read 42 books in a month okay and i'm not gonna try to okay because september is my birthday month i need to engage with the month properly however a huge component of my year of getting rid of my book stacks is to be better about DNFing things, right? To sort of pick up books that I think potentially I won't like without fear or hesitation, read a good chunk of it and then DNF it if it's not going well, okay? Because life is short and book stacks are just fucking massive. Also, last year for Shorty September, I managed to read a book a day. Like, I didn't set out to read a book a day. I set out to read, like, a number of books that were associated with prompts. Um, but then I sort of, like, started getting through them in a day, and I thought, how long can I keep this going? Like, um, you know, in that episode of Friends, where they're, like, throwing the ball back and forth, and they realize they haven't dropped it for, like, a couple hours, and they try to see, like, how long they can go, and then it becomes, like, an obsession. Anyway, it was basically like that. And I did end up going all the way to the end, reading a book a day. Like... That was sometimes a bit stressful, like with the ball back and forth, like it shouldn't be, but it ended up sort of being. So this year, I'm not, I'm, like again, I'm going to start out with just the books that are in the prompts. And then if I end up reading way more than that, banging, okay? But also if I read loads of a book and then DNF it, that's not going to count as a book a day. And I feel like I need to be okay with that. I've read a serious chunk of that book and now I've not completed it. It's not a wasted day, okay, because I'm getting rid of unread books in my house and moving toward a greater goal. So for this reason, I have laid out a plan, okay? So I've put a book for each prompt, but made several backup books for that prompt. So if the book I've chosen ends up being a dead and I DNF it, I can move then onto another one in that prompt. Also, if I go through all of them, all of the prompts, and then I'm stuck, say there's only, what, 12 prompts. If I do end up doing a book a day, that's only 12 days into September, I'm going to need another round. So then I can hit the next level, right? So first prompt is Shorty Shorts. It's a 70s and 80s book. This one was written in the 80s, and it's from the library, okay? So it's completely going against my whole plan, but give me a minute Okay, because I feel like it's going to be banging. It is Hadriana and All My Dreams by René de Pest. So I have not heard of him. He's a bit of a superstar in Haitian literature, so I feel sad about it. But it's just going to be the beginning, okay, of dipping into this guy. This book is about a voodoo zombie. So it's like um, a woman who sort of becomes like an undead version of herself. And that's really all I know about it so much. But I'm really excited about it. I think this is one of my, like, most looking forward to sort of reads for September. Okay. Other ones that will potentially fit into that, if that one's a bit of a dud, or if I go for a second round, Maya Angelou's, and Still I Rise. Okay, am I right? Also, I have all these little ones that I got from, like, the book hut. Like, Catherine Hepburn, Little Me, um... Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Bon Voyage, Mr. President. Also, Patricia Highsmith, Little Tales of Misogyny, which I will not give up for shit. That's going to be amazing. Those will all work. So next one is Denim Shorts, which is a modern classic. 
for that one I'm going to read Maxwell's So Long See You Tomorrow. This is another library book and please don't judge me okay there's method in my madness this one i don't know a whole lot about but i had two people tell me that it was one of the best books they'd ever read um it's something about in like a rural area like rural illinois or something something awful happens um and it causes these two people to not speak to each other like brothers or something not speak to each other for 50 years and then one of them who's like older is sort of recounting it backward uh, don't know a lot about it but I feel like this one also is going to be brilliant. Ones that will also fit in that category in case it's a dud. Who Will Run the Frog Hospital by Laurie Moore. This is a buildings roman situation and also John Le Carre's uh, Call for the Dead uh, which I love like the George Smiley ones. I've read one of them before and enjoyable shit. So the next prompt is Play Suit Shorts which is a book you'll regret. Uh, like a book you'll regret starting, a book you'll regret ending, like basically just in the way of wearing play suit shorts anywhere, it will inevitably be regrettable, right? So for that, I'm going to go with Fountainville by Tishana Doshi. And if that one's a dud, I'm going to replace it with one of the ones that I have from the same series, okay? So this series I love. It's retellings, like modern retellings of stories from the Mabinogion, which is like the Welsh um sort of set of legends or sort of like epic book of legends and folk tales and stuff um these stories are brilliant but they do sort of do a bit of a mind fuck they sort of mess with your mind they're a bit confusing um and they require a bit of like delving into your, the original legend as well to sort of see the mirroring but in the end i do love them so this one is based on uh, the original tale of the Lady of the Fountain and Tishani Doshi sort of weaves in um, sort of Celtic mythology with like modern Indian sort of tales and stuff like that, which I love the idea of. Um, but again, if it doesn't work out, I've got other backups. They're all slightly regrettable. So next one is Half and Half Shorts, which is my favorite prompt of all of these. It was my favorite last year. This is like a book and movie tie-in, right? Like read the book and then watch the movie that they've based off of it. So for this, I'm going to do J.G. Ballard, High Rise. Um, I read another J.G. Ballard book for um, 90s book club, I think at some point, and that one was pretty good. And also, um, a mate from another book club told me that this one was going to be good and a bit weird and a bit like cult classic-y and the show now has Tom Hiddleston I think on Amazon. Within the walls of an elegant 40-story tower block the affluent tenants are hell-bent on an orgy of destruction. And if that one is a dead we have Fight Club. Uh, the movie for this is on Amazon free at the minute um, and also Les Enfants Terribles which I've always wanted to read, which is like a really weird sort of book. And I think they made a movie for it in the 20s. So the movie will also be weird. I hope that I can get it because that will be banging. So the next prompt is cargo shorts. And this one's to do with nature. Um, I think this is quite loosely to do with nature. So, you know, like a book about nature or a book just has like a, a naturey feel or like a book about adventure or like this. So uh, the first one, the one that I'm going to do is... Things That Are by Amy Leach. This one I heard about from Sarah at Your Two Shelf. Uh, she said it was amazing and it's sort of just like little snippets about things about the natural world. You know, like things about sea cucumbers and sort of interesting facts about nature and stuff. So it sounded amazing, so I got it. I might actually read this one with Anne one as well. She might enjoy it. Uh, backup ones, if that one's a dead. Doubt it will be, but if it is. Uh, Lanny by Max Porter and this may actually be a dud loads of people have told me it's not very good but on this one I'm like it's like a sort of folk tale set in the woods you know sort of nature based um and if that one doesn't work I found a, an ebook on Scribd Upright Women Wanted and I've heard of this one I've heard it's good and I think it's a bit like um a sort of weird take on a western like an adventure sort of story you know sort of going on that bend it's all, there are no rules here. It's all just loosely based. So the next one is Scort. Uh, and this is a book that doesn't really fit into a genre or which is like a hybrid of genres that mixes them. So for this one, I'm going to go with The Emperor's Babe, which I have, but which is upstairs. And I do not want to go and get it. So I will show it to you some point around the screen. Um, this is a book by Bernadine Evaristo. I saw her at Hay Festival in May and she's brilliant. I love her. Like I read her Girl, Woman, Other, 
and it was really good and now I want to read loads of hers so this one is a bit weird like genre wise like it's um about I think like a slave girl or something in the Roman Empire like in London um and it's sort of written not in a normal way it's sort of written in verse um and that's really all I know about it but I've heard it's really good so I'm going with it. Um, if that one's a dud, potentially it will be, because I literally know nothing about it. Uh, we're going to go with the Mezzanine by Nicholson Baker. Um, this basically just takes place in a whole day. And it's one guy's random thoughts about his lunch and stuff. Or like walking up an escalator. I think it's just basically like stream of consciousness ramblings for a day. And then if that one doesn't work, I'm going to go with Disaster Tourist, which is translated from Korean, I think. And it sort of mixes cli-fi and thriller and a bunch of different genres. Okay, so next prompt is Ripped Shorts, which is like a slasher or like a murder mystery, if that's not your thing. So that one, I'm going to go with Hairspray and Switchblades by V. Castro. This one I heard about from Shan and Bert at Best Story Time. Uh, this one, I think, is roughly uh, some strippers or prostitutes. Uh, have to deal with a situation to do with a serial killer who goes around killing strippers and prostitutes. Uh, steamy, bloody, dangerous, hairspray and switchblades. What more could a girl need to survive the hot streets? This is going to be amazing, isn't it? It is. Like, it's just going to be amazing. So, if it's a dud, which I doubt it will be, or like, you know, if I need to go like second, third round, I've got Stephen King's The Colorado Kid, uh, which is a murder mystery. Um, and... Rizzio. I read the first book in this sort of series of like Scottish Darkland tales and really enjoyed it. So hopefully that one will be as good. So the next one is Lifeguard Shorts, which is a beach read. Um, I feel like this category is pretty vague. Like it's hard to nail down what a beach read is, but I feel like for me, this is it. So Highway Blue by Ailsa McFarlane. Um, and this is sort of an American road trip type book. Um, written with the electrifying poise of one of our most exciting new novelists. It's about love in all its forms and a search for love that is also a kind of redemption. I've heard it's really good, so I'm super excited about that. Um, backup books for this prompt, I have Sex, Drugs and Cocoa Puffs by uh, Chuck Klosterman. Uh, this is a memoir to do with his 80s childhood, which I'm proud for. Um, and also Karen Russell's Sleep Donation, um, which is about like a sort of dystopian type pandemic uh which causes people to not be able to sleep and then you need to like donate sleep from others or steal sleep basically from them next runway fashion shorts which is a book with a beautiful cover i don't really have a lot of books with beautiful covers i don't think i don't know why uh but this is sort of the most beautiful cover i could find cursed bunny by bora chung this is translated from korean as well i think and it's um short stories um i think i was told that one of these is about poo which I'm for. Um, if this one is not good, which some people have said, um, the next one I have is Miss Iceland. It's another one that's upstairs. I'll show you somewhere on the screen. Um, this one is about like, I think it's sort of like conservative Icelandic society where this woman like doesn't want to be a beauty queen. She wants to be a journalist, but ends up having to be like a beauty queen anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then also another one that I have like an ebook for on Scribd, um, which is no one is talking about this. Uh, lots of people have said that one's bunk, but I'm going to give it a go. Okay, so the next one is Emperor's New Shorts. And this is a book with an unreliable narrator. So I feel like with some of them, it's going to be obvious that the narrator is unreliable. Like, if it's a child narrator, okay? Or, like, if the narrator is struggling with mental illness or, or something like this. Like, there's ways for you to know. But other ones, there's no way for you to know until you read it. In which case, you just have to guess. And that's fine. Uh, this one is the one that I plan to read. Uh, it is The Faces by Tove Ditlevison. I never know how to say that person's name. Um, this one is about a woman who ends up being institutionalised, I think, um, for mental illness or something. Um, yeah, yet as she descends into a world of pills and hospitals, she begins to wonder, is insanity really something to be feared? So I think she's going to be unreliable as an area, but that's just me. It's quite short. Um, I've heard it's good. If that one doesn't work, or if I need a second round, I'm going to go with Mouth to Mouth um, by Andwan something. And Karen, uh, Roving Reader, said that this one is brilliant and also confirmed that he is slightly unreliable as a narrator. Um, and then 
again, third one, Ice by Anna Kavan. So this one's a bit of a classic, I think, and it's about like an ice world, like a dystopian ice world where this guy is trying to hunt this woman down. Um, and I think I heard somewhere that the guy himself um, is sort of lying to himself about why he wants to find the woman or sort of lying to us about why he wants to find the woman. So he's a bit unreliable. But I don't know. It's just a guess. So now we have boxer shorts, which is a comfort read. And for this, I feel like I'm just going to read the kids' books in my house because I do feel like, you know, like middle grade books or whatever, like are a bit comforting. They're like my happy place. So the first one I'm going to do is The Witching of Aveline Jones by Phil Hicks. This is the second one in the series. The first one was like The Haunting of Aveline Jones. And it was so good. I absolutely loved that one. I think I read it, I don't know, in like half a ween thon or something like that. This is the next one and it's gonna be just as good like actually i remember even though it's a middle grade book the first one was a bit scary um if that one doesn't work or if i need another round i have two other kids type books uh this one tales of terror uncle montague's tales of terror by chris Priestley. i bought for my kid and i to read in the tent when we went to hay festival and we read a bit of it but not really enough like it's only really the first story so i'll read that one um also i got this at hay festival by daniel morden it's dark tales from the woods we actually saw daniel morden speak at hay festival and he's such a good storyteller he was absolutely brilliant i love that guy and this one i think is actually signed yeah so and i think they're like whales based as well like the woods stories i don't know we'll see. okay last prompt is bermuda shorts which is a book translated into english for that one, I'm going to do The Union of Synchronized Swimmers by Christina Sandu. This one was translated actually by the author. So she wrote it, first of all, in Finnish, I think, and then did her own rewriting of it into English. I feel like that counts as translated, even though it was done literally by the author. Um, this one is a really good idea. I'm really excited to read this one. It's about a um, synchronized swimming team in the Soviet Union who decide to defect during like a sort of competition in another country. Um, and then if that one doesn't work or if I need more, I have Revenge by Yoko Gawa. I do like Yoko Gawa. I read like um, her other one, The Professor or something. And then I also have like The Memory Police in my house ready to go. This one is like horror tales, like uh, sort of short stories, like horror ones, which I'm for. Uh, also tra translated from Japanese. Um, and then oh, this one, Tokyo Ueno Station. This one I think has to do with the afterlife, like somebody's a ghost and then can see things happening. Don't really know. Also translated from Japanese. Okay, that is the plan for Shorty September. I'm super excited. I do have this remaining stack, mind, of Shorty books in my house that either wouldn't fit into a prompt or like just would have been overkill for certain prompts. Maybe I can also get to them. I don't know. Does anyone know anything about these? Any thoughts? I don't know. Okay, that's it. I apologize if this video is literally hours long. Um, if you've gotten to the end, thank you for watching. If you have any thoughts, please let me know. Are you doing Shorty September? What are you planning to read for Shorty September? Do you have any thoughts about the books that I have just said? Have you read them? Did you like them? Did you not like them? This is all very important information to glean before I go headfirst into Shorty September. Okay, any comments, questions, concerns, please let me know and I will see you next week. Bye! Bye bye bye!